where we'll be talking about the, uh, the neighbors, basically. What can the neighbors do to, to help support uh, peace and security in Iraq? And or what, uh, what problems are the neighbors causing uh, in uh, trying to achieve these objectives? Uh, my name is Scott McLeod. I'm the Middle East correspondent for Time Magazine, based in Cairo, Egypt. And we have a very distinguished panel of uh, dis real decision makers. <coughs> on the Iraq uh, issues. Um, I'll just uh, start with uh, Senator Hatch. Uh, he's a Republican senator from Utah, was elected in 1976. He's a member of the Senate Intelligence Committee. He's been a passionate supporter of the war on terrorism, and he's been opposing Democratic, uh, Democratic Party efforts to impose a timetable for the withdrawal of American forces from Iraq. He recently quoted Winston Churchill, uh, who said during the, the Battle of Britain in World War II, the history teaches us that resolution to see your commitments through is what makes great statesmen and great nations. Uh, Senator Gordon Smith uh, is the Republican senator from Oregon, was elected in 1996. He's a member of the Senate Finance Committee. After supporting the war in Iraq, he made headlines in December uh, when he described uh, on the Senate floor uh, his view that the Bush administration's handling of the war might be criminal. Uh, along with Senator Chuck Hagel, he recently voted with Democrats uh, in uh, their efforts to impose a timetable for the American troop withdrawal from Iraq. Um, his Excellency Vice President Tariq al-Hashimi is the head of the Islamic Party in Iraq, and which is uh, the largest Sunni Muslim bloc in the parliament. He's been a powerful advocate for national reconciliation in Iraq and has pressed parliament to amend the Iraqi constitution accordingly. He's been supporting setting a timetable for an American withdrawal from Iraq, and he knows the tragedy of Iraq um, unfortunately very personally due to the deaths of recent deaths of family members in Iraq. Um, and we have with us Deputy Prime Minister of Iraq and Member of Parliament Barham Saleh. He's an official of the Patriotic Union of Kurdistan. He has opposed setting timetables, arguing that Iraq's security challenges are difficult and complex. And I'd like to, uh, last but not least, uh, introduce our our host, the Foreign Minister of Jordan, uh, His Excellency Abdullah Al-Khatib. Al uh, this is the second time uh, His Excellency has been the Foreign Minister of Jordan. Uh, as, as everybody here probably knows very well, uh, uh, the government of His Majesty King Ab Abdullah opposed the, the, war in Jordan, uh, the war in Iraq. And now uh, Jordan is playing host to about 800,000 or so refugees from that war. So I would like to uh, begin. Uh, well, oh, I beg your pardon. Beginning. Yeah, beg your pardon. <laughs> beg this your is pardon. called fairness, yeah. I, uh, you started with a bad grade, thank you, you very say. Much. You already failed. <laughs> I, I, I have a special affection for Dr. Larajani because I've met him. He's, he's received me many times in his office in Tehran. Uh, Dr. Lara Johnny is a former member of the Iranian parliament and has been one of Iran's most articulate spokesmen uh, in foreign affairs issues. And uh, I, I apologize for that uh, slip. Dr. Lara Johnny, nobody can ignore you. <laughs> <laughs> I also just would point out for anyone who may not know that, that Dr. Lara Johnny's little brother is an important uh, foreign policy official in Iran as well. Dr. Ali Larajani is the head of the Supreme National Security Council in Iraq, and he's been instrumental in trying to uh, negotiate a, a, a sensible resolution to the dispute over Iran's nuclear program. So I would just uh, like to begin 
the questions by uh, starting with uh, our host, uh, Foreign Minister Al Khatib, um, talking about uh, whether it is in the interests of Iraq's neighbors to cooperate on security matters. I'd like to ask you, uh, the Arabs have expressed a lot of fears about, to put it in the words of one of your foreign minister colleagues in the Arab world, handing Iraq over to the Iranians. Um, isn't cooperation between the Arabs and Iran at this point tantamount to helping Iran succeed in taking over Iraq? Uh, it really depends on, on what uh, neighbors of Iraq collectively want to see happening in Iraq. First of all, we all know that the territorial integrity of Iraq is essential. The unity of Iraq is vitally important to all countries in the, in the region. And uh, we hope that we will be looking at the strategic interests of the region rather than gaining tactical gains here and there. Uh, we look at the situation in, uh, on the ground and we see that there uh, are different influences. Of course, it depends on the Iraqis' uh, ability to uh, uh, succeed in their political reconciliation effort. And uh, it also depends on them to convince all neighbors not to interfere. You know, interference may result, as I said, in small little tactical gains, but it will definitely result in strategic loss for all of us, because if these uh, influences continue, uh, the territorial integrity of Iraq will be weakened, and this is detrimental for all in the region. Uh, on the other hand, riding over the uh, sectarian divisions uh, is like riding a very wild tiger that you can't uh, really uh, restrain down the road. And uh, there is no country in the region that is immune of the sectarian uh, 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 risks that are uh, really uh, uh, contagious to the whole region. I, uh, I think that people will have to be very, very careful. Uh, influence may be attractive in the short term, but it may uh, affect those who are trying to exert it. And we, uh, we all have an interest in maintaining the territorial integrity and the unity uh, of Iraq. And this is a long-term interest of all in the region. So uh, I think that uh, uh, Arab countries are willing to cooperate with Iran. Uh, we have a forum that uh, 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 gathers the Iranians and the Turks with the Arab neighbors of, uh, of Iraq in addition to uh, Egypt and, uh, and Bahrain. Uh, that forum met recently with the P5 in Sharm el-Sheikh and there was unanimous support uh, to the territorial integrity and the unity of Iraq, but uh, definitely there uh, is a need to improve the cooperation between all neighbors of Iraq in order to uh, uh, refrain from any interference in the internal affairs of Iraq and to uh, push all Iraqis uh, towards more uh, reconciliation and towards uh, 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 improving their ability to work together to achieve that reconciliation. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Larajani, um, we'll talk more in a bit about the upcoming meeting between the Iranian ambassador and the American ambassador in, in, in Baghdad to discuss uh, Iraqi issues. But I, I just wonder in terms of uh, national interests, is it in, in Iran's national interest to cooperate with the United States in Iraq? In other words, wouldn't Iran, from a strategic point of view, rather see the, the, the U.S. bogged down in Iraq, creating political problems for itself, and perhaps uh, furthering Iranian interests, of course, but also uh, deteriorating American relations with the Arab world? Isn't, isn't that really in Iran's interest, to see the Americans fail and fail badly in Iraq? So is there an Iranian interest to, to make sure that that happens? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. First of all, you mentioned uh, what the neighbors of Iraq should do. I will count the United States of America as a neighbor by that definition because there is plenty of things that they should do as well. So let, let's not exclude the uh, United States from that. Uh, as far as uh, our national interest is concerned, number one, our national interest is there should be a unified Iraq, 
uh, there should be sovereign Iraq, there should be a stable Iraq. Uh, uh, an Iraq government, Iraqi government which is stable, which is in control, which is developing, it is the best interest of Iran. We are ready to help any government in Iraq for achieving that. We need uh, a government which can live with others in peace, tranquility. We have plenty of cultural interest, economical interest. So this is basically our interest. As far as uh, American policy toward Iraq is concerned, uh, the, the, there should be a, a good analysis of that. Uh, perhaps uh, President Bush was expecting that when bombing Iraq, then there would be red carpet for him. We can, uh, the Iraq uh, should uh, uh, submit to the occupation. This was wrong. I mean, Iraq is an advanced society, culturally very complex. And nobody likes occupation. This is true. So there were plenty of mistakes committed by the United States uh, in this occupation. What we, want, what we do not want to see that Iraq should be a place that even troubles of the United States should be cured there. <laughs> I mean, why? I mean, American policy is, is wrong in a lot of aspects. Why the Iraqi people should pay for that? So definitely. Uh, uh, I should say that Americans are bogged down in Iraq and to some extent in Afghanistan due to the lack of knowledge and bad policy, Ill, Ill, Ill knowledge, I mean policy in, in the area. Our national interest vis-a-vis -vis Americans is very simple. Uh, the, we should contain the tension between us. It is in the benefit of us and the United States. We should decrease the tension. American policy toward Iran is suffering from a three decades of paranoia after revolution. So changing the regime in Iran, bombing Iran, hitting Iran, and the language of threat is very common in the literature of American policymakers, uh, politicians, and also to uh, some degree, I mean, Israelis as well. This is very bad. This is indicative of a wrong mindset. It is not in the interest of America as well. So uh, we think the curbing the tension between us is it has mutual benefit. This is the rationale for sitting down with the American to in Iraq to discuss the issue. And Iraq will be the first issue, perhaps. And if it succeeds, it can open up to other discussions, which affect the whole region. The whole region is suffering from this hostility between uh, Iran and America. And sometimes it has been blown up uh, and uh, fueled by the American positions and statements, perhaps in our view, to justify their uh, military presence over there. I think this, I mean, th this region does not have more stomach for violence. As this is our uh, general perception, and this way we look to the issue. Just, just to follow up that. Uh... Oh, let me add one thing. We should not expect that. This meeting should resolve all the issues in the world, or all the disputed matters. It may open up a path, a road, which contain the tension, decrease the tension, and later on may lead to better cooperation. But we just, should be patient, yes. But just to, thank you, but just to follow up, apart from how this has hurt or helped Iraq, does the fact that, as you say, America is bogged down in Iraq, have you been happy about that? Has that helped Iran in any way? Well, there is one element which everybody in the world is happy, and that is that one single power tries to impose itself unilaterally to claim omnipotence and try to resolve everything in the world by resort to military might. I think this is an end to that policy. Even in Israel also experienced that in, in, uh, when they confronted Lebanon. It is an end or the beginning and end of overt use of military power. This is, though it is costing, unfortunately, Americans' lives, this is a bad thing. We are very much against that. And we, we, we really don't like to see people are killed over there. But this is something that most countries of the world, they like it. I mean, an end to the military uh, use and military occupation, yes. Thank you. Vice President al-Hashimi, um, what, 
what does Iraq want from its neighbors, uh, excluding the United States? I think, <coughs> excuse me, I think Dr. Lara Johnny made an interesting point that America is now a Middle East country uh, and a, a neighbor of... Fundamentalism to the White House. You see how the president is speaking. <laughs> but I, I would, excuse me. But I would, um, but I would ask you to exclude America from this. But from Iraq's immediate neighbors, what are you looking for? What's the problem? What, what help do you need? What are Iraq's neighbors doing that you'd like them to stop doing? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The straightforward uh, answer to this question, in fact, is. Quite clear, in fact. Uh, we don't like, in fact, um, any foreign um, entity on the, on the earth. It's not only the regional uh, uh, countries that we are talking about, in fact, to interfere into our, in, into our uh, internal issues. But uh, that dream, is, in fact, is, is, is not to be seen, regardless of the struggle of the Iraqis, in fact, and all um, our uh, loud voices that we have managed to exercise in, in various medias. Um, we try to convince our neighbors that, look, the situation in Iraq is going to spill over to your countries sooner or later. So just reconsider what's going on in Iraq. The Iraqi uh, 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 internal or national security is in no longer is going to be confined and restricted to the boundaries of Iraq. So the security of Iraq becoming the security of the region. So try to be very cautious on that. Um, stop your interference in our internal issue, first of all. Try to avoid sorting your pending issues with whoever might be on the Iraqi territories and pushing the Iraqis to fight on your behalf or on behalf of, of somebody else or to, to be part of a secret or confidential or pending agenda. Stop that. And second, we still in need of your genuine and faithful efforts to encourage Iraqis to sit down together and to reconcile their differences and to start talking about the future, try to resolve the outstanding issues about the peace, about the violence, and to think seriously how to render your services, in fact, for the economic development of my country to, to, take, to take off very quickly. The, uh, the forum of the International Compact uh, offering a genuine opportunities for the international community, in, including the regional uh, 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 countries, they, that they are committed, in fact, to help Iraqis uh, in, 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 in developing the national economy. But to do that, what we in need of is a national compact to be preceding the international compact. That national compact, uh, regardless and nevertheless, it's a direct responsibilities of the Iraqi, Iraqi government. It's still in need for the neighboring countries to shake hand with the Iraqi government and render services and encourage the people, in fact, to reconcile and to sort out many uh, key pending issues that which could pave the way for the international compact. So many things to be done by our neighboring countries. Could I Thank ask you. you to be a little bit more specific about some of those points that you made? You spoke about interference in Iraqi internal affairs. You spoke about, I think, proxy wars, uh, neighbors fighting their own disputes inside of Iraq. And you, you talked about the need for the neighbors to encourage Iraqis along the way toward reconciliation and economic uh, redevelopment. Can you be more specific about interference? Who's fighting wars inside of Iraq uh, by proxy? And w what more specifically can the neighbors do to encourage Iraqi parties along a, a positive uh, direction? Um, 
we talk a lot uh, in a specific way, in fact, in, in, in the past. I don't want, in fact, to make things difficult to my colleagues or to the audience. Uh, I'm sure that the international community is very much aware about uh, who is doing what in my country, time being, in fact, and who, else, who is the actual troublemakers in, in, in my country and what sort of agendas it's been uh, pursued since the invasion 2003. Uh, but becoming uh, um, a clear phenomena that uh, um, there is uh, clear interference in my country internal issues and there is a proxy war and uh, there is a different agenda, agendas that's going on in my country. Um, um, I would like, in fact, to stop at this, uh, at this analysis if you may, may allow me for that. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you, Vice President al -Hashmi. Uh, <clears throat> Senator Hatch, I'd like to turn to you now. Um, the American and Iranian amb ambassadors to, to Baghdad are going to have a meeting uh, shortly on, I think, May 26th to begin discussing issues on Iraq. I should mention that, that Senator Smith and Senator Hatch have just returned from another visit to Iraq and, and know the situation there quite well from personal observation. Um, I'd like to know the, the, the Bush administration talks a lot about uh, Iranian and Syrian interference. Uh, but from your point of view, as a member of the Senate Intelligence Committee and your observations in Iraq, I'd like to ask you about what does America want from Iran in terms of cooperation in Iraq? Well, I'm limited in what I can say with regard to intelligence, but I will say this, that, uh, that uh, in this trip uh, to Iraq just this weekend, uh, we would like to see Iran more cooperative. We would like to see Iran not sending in uh, ability to make bombs, IEDs, and EFPs. We had evidence as we were there, uh, very solid evidence, that. Uh, Iran has been participating in this. We would like to see Iran uh, recognize the fact that uh, Iran being primarily Shia, that the United States has spent a lot, a lot of its treasure and given a lot of lives for the greatest liberation of Shia in the history of the planet. And we know that Iran's a great country. We have many Iranians in our country. Uh, we have an Iranian in my family who I have great respect for, and we would like to have a better relationship. And it is in the best interest of Iran to do so. If you look at the Iranian economy, economy and it, by all measures, it's not much better than it was in 1979. Yet it has some of the greatest thinkers, business people, and abilities of almost any nation. And there must be something wrong that a country with that kind of brilliance, that kind of capacity, cannot uh, raise its uh, economic fortunes better than it has. I suspect part of it is because uh, of the current leadership in Iran, and uh, which to some uh, uh, is, anything, is something less than sufficient. But we had evidence as we went to Iraq this time that Iran is participating in uh, destabilizing Iraq. I suspect that part of that is because 80% of the people in Iraq wanted a representative form of government and risked their lives to go and vote for it. And we respect that. Now the United States has spent around $100 billion a year in, in Iraq. Uh, we were upwards of $700 billion to try and stabilize a country that deserves the stabilization and freedoms that can come from having a representative form of government. We would like Iran to work with us in that regard, but not just Iran, all of the countries in the Middle East, because it's in, I think, the Middle East's best interests uh, to work together to try and bring stability to the Middle East and not war. Uh, I listened to, to uh, Mr. Larajani and uh, his criticisms of the United States. I think uh, there's no question that we've made some mistakes in this uh, 
war. But the intentions have been honorable. And the fact of the matter is, Iran had violated more than 12 of the UN resolutions. And we didn't just go in there because we thought they had weapons of mass destruction, which every, every uh, liberal country in the world believed at the time, not just the United States of America, but because they were in violation over and over again of UN resolutions. Now, I think uh, the whole Middle East would benefit a great deal if stability could come to Iraq and if we would have more cooperation from their neighbors in Iran and Syria and if uh, Lebanon would be less interfered with by some of the uh, nations there, including Iran. So Iran, it would seem to me it would be in their best interests in their best economic interests, if nothing else, to start mending their own affairs and not interfering in the affairs of the other nations in the Middle East. Senator, has, why, why has it taken the United States so long to reach out to Iran in this way, to, to talk about uh, mutual interests in Iraq? And are you very optimistic that, is this a cosmetic political ploy by the Bush administration to show that they're reaching out, or are you optimistic this is going to be substantive and serious? Well, there has been some reaching out, but it's been behind the scenes rather than, uh, than in front of the uh, scenes. Uh, I think we need to do more, but I think Iran needs to do more, and there needs to be a better good faith shown. Uh, thus far, there's a real, uh, a real reticence in our country uh, and a lack of respect for the good faith uh, of the Iranian people. But I think uh, America is willing to sit down, negotiate, and see what can be done to resolve these problems. After all, we don't enjoy having our young men and women killed uh, in any land uh, other than our own, and we don't enjoy it there. So you can imagine uh, how we feel about this. Uh, this is a different war than any other war we've ever fought, too, because it's against terrorism. People who don't have, they don't represent a country, they don't wear uniforms, they don't abide by international law, and, uh, and, and they are uh, uh, people who uh, want to disrupt the basic stabilized forces and uh, countries in our, in our, uh, in our, in our world. Uh, and we cannot allow them to win. It's just that simple. And if we do, I think the whole Middle East is going to be in chaos as well as many other countries in the world. So we would like to have more help. We would like to work with our Iranian uh, counterparts. We know how brilliant the Iranian people are. Uh, we have respect uh, for Iranian people, and I think we can do a better job in, in uh, diplomacy and in uh, getting together and seeing what we can do to resolve some of these difficulties. But we need some indications of respect, some indications of willingness, some indications of good faith, and some indications of obedience to the rule of law, international law, if you will, uh, from Iran and other nations, including Syria, uh, in order to accomplish what really could be a very stabilizing force and a stabilizing situation in the Middle East, uh, one of the greatest areas in the world today. And we'd like to see that. And I think uh, maybe we can learn uh, from uh, our Iranian co counterparts if they'll sit down and we will sit down together and maybe solve some of these problems. Thank you, Senator. Senator Smith, I'd like you, if, if I may, to uh, respond to the same question but about Syria. What does the United States uh, believe that Syria could do, and what, what does the United States want Syria to do regarding cooperation and support for, for peace and, and development in, in Iraq? Well, whether it's Syria or Iran, we would like to see non-interference. We would like to see transparency. We would like to see uh, a cessation of uh, supporting terrorist organizations, specifically Hezbollah uh, or Al-Qaeda, who would like to destabilize this uh, democratic effort uh, in the nation of Iraq. We would like Syria to see um, that in, within Iraq you have all of the, the ancient tensions between Sunnis and Shias and Kurds and that there is a community of interest for this to succeed. If the Iraqis can pull together um, and solve political questions that allow these uh, ancient feuds to settle down and live together in harmony and peace. Uh, that is a model for the Middle East. 
If this fails, uh, then the chaos that would flow out of Iraq would find their way into each of their, their countries, whether, uh, well, throughout the Middle East, but specifically Syria as well. So I think there is a community of interest um, that all Middle Eastern nations should share in seeing a stable Iraq. And um, they have to make that judgment, but I think there can be no question from the evidence that we have of Syrian and Iranian uh, involvement in Iraq uh, trying to destabilize uh, their political efforts. There is no military solution to Iraq. Uh, there is only a political solution, and that solution remains with Iraqis, not Americans. But I think Syria and Iran should know that the days are coming to an end where Americans will be patrolling the streets of Iraq. That, however, does not mean that we will leave a vacuum that they can fill. We will be there to make sure uh, that no outside power disturbs the political uh, efforts at reconcil reconciliation within Iraq. And I think that that's important for them to know because democracy takes time, it's hard work, takes compromise, good faith, and there is a, a bright future if it succeeds. Uh, and I'm confident that America will remain there in some capacity to make sure a vacuum, a void is not left that terrorists and tyrants would fill. Senator, what, what's your reading uh, based on your briefings from the State Department on uh, the, the meeting that, that, that Secretary Rice had with Foreign Minister Wali Mualim of Syria and Sharm el Sheikh about a week or two ago. Um, is this the beginning of some serious dialogue with the Syrians on Iraq? Uh, do you sense that the Syrians are going to be uh, amenable to uh, cooperation <coughs> and doing something they haven't done so far? I've heard reports that the meetings were positive. I, as a senator, would encourage them to continue. America should never be afraid to talk to anyone least of all the Syrians or the Iranians. Uh, we, sh we need to understand one another better and understand our, our positions better and to share them openly and to back them up. Uh, I, I think the Iraq study group essentially had it right. Uh, we have made many mistakes in the execution uh, of delivering peace to Iraq. That's evident for all to see. But going forward, uh, there needs to be an emphasis on Iraqi politics and multilateral diplomacy. That needs to include Iraq and Syria. Uh, if for no other reason, so that the whole world understands where each side is, where the interests lie, uh, and what each nation is doing to, uh, in the direction of progress. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Deputy Prime Minister Saleh, May I ask you to give us your take, your reading, on uh, what do you expect from the meeting in Baghdad between the Iranian and American ambassadors on May 26th? Um, are you optimistic that this will have any significant uh, impact on the, 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 the crisis in Iraq and the efforts to get out of it? Well, undeniably, that meeting will be uh, an important first, and we hope that it will set the stage for an ongoing dialogue between the United States, Iran, and the other regional actors. But I want to warn of uh, uh, a fundamental concern that we have from Iraq. If this means that Iran and the United States can sit down and basically decide the future of Iraq and divide Iraq into zones of influence between these various players, that will be obviously unacceptable from our perspective. Uh, Iran is a key player. Iran is uh, an important neighbor of Iraq, and uh, we certainly, our national interest has uh, uh, dictates that we need good neighborly relations with Iran. Uh, relations that are based on respecting mutual interests and non-interference. But by the same token, there are other key players in the region, the Arab neighbors, Turkey. These are all need to be part of the solution as well, together with the United States. What we believe is needed 
less tension in the region, de-escalation of this, uh, uh, these problems that are playing themselves out on Iraqi, in an Iraqi context. If anything, Iraq is a victim of the regional dynamics. Iraq is being burdened by these tensions, not to mention uh, terrorism, radicalization that we see across uh, the region. So any effort that will see to greater regional cooperation with the United States and for that matter the European Union will be better. What I think is needed to remove or re resolve this crisis in Iraq, and it's a serious crisis. Uh, we need an Iraqi national pact, a power sharing arrangement that is sustainable and balanced between the various elements of Iraqi society. But for that to be viable, for that to be sustainable, we need a regional pact with the United States, a uh, regional slash international pact that will support uh, Iraqi reconciliation and Iraqi national pact. That is the roadmap to achieving stability in Iraq. Thank you. May I just follow that up by asking, um, how, how dependent is uh, cooperation from Iraq's neighbors? neighbors like Syria and Iran, Turkey, you mentioned Saudi Arabia, Jordan. How, how dependent are you on their cooperation for success in Iraq? I think they are key players, and deniably so. I mean, we're not an island in the Pacific. We're part of this region. And fact of the matter is everybody has a stake in the situation in Iraq. We don't like it, but the reality is that everybody has emerged to be a player. In answer to your question, who, who dabbles in Iraqi politics from the neighborhood? Who does not, the question is. <laughs> the fate of Iraq is crucial to the region. Uh, almost every issue of the region is at play in Iraq. The future of Islam, the relationship of Islam and democracy, East, West, America and Iran, oil, ethno-nationalism, Kurd-Arab relations, Sunni-Shia, every issue is at play and how the outcome of this Iraqi uh, crisis ends <coughs> will have an impact. But I want to remind our neighbors, all of our neighbors, that Iraq under Saddam Hussein uh, was a problem for everybody, not just for the Iraqi people. All our neighbors have suffered uh, from Saddam's uh, adventurism, aggression, and uh, Iraq was always a source of trouble in that region. Now we have an opportunity to really turn Iraq from a source of trouble in the region into one of a pillar of stability across the region. That for that to happen, really the neighborhood need to look upon Iraq, not a zone to settle in scores, but uh, to create a zone of common interest. And I believe all the neighbors of Iraq, the United States, have a shared interest in stability in Iraq. Instability in Iraq means fueling extremism, means success for Al-Qaeda, means success for extremist, fundamentalist fanatics that are terrorizing not only the Iraqi people, but endangering the entire region. What is happening in Iraq today is truly of crucial importance to all of us. I do not want to underestimate the serious nature of the crisis that we're living through in Iraq. We are at a tough, uh, critical juncture. Uh, if we fail, we will pay a heavy price in Iraq, and we are already paying a heavy price. But I dare say all our neighbors will also pay. And let me also remind, in terms of this context of the uh, debate about uh, uh, what needs to be done. Again. An Iraqi domestic pact, uh, some people call it national reconciliation, some others call it power sharing, a sustainable, stable arrangement among ourselves in order to solidify our ranks to defeat terrorism and extremism, but by the same token, this will not be sustainable unless we have the neighbors to work with us. Ladies and gentlemen, Al-Qaeda is not an isolated, marginal threat terrorist organization in Iraq. It is a virus that is infesting the entire region. You come to Anbar province, you come to Diyala province, where Iraqis tribes are taking on Al-Qaeda. I'm not talking about security operations and security organizations or the multinational forces. This is the type of dynamics that we are witnessing happening in Iraq. These are the dynamics that need to be supported by the neighborhoods and as well as by the international community at large. Vice, Vice President uh, Hashemi, I'm just wondering if all of this focus on the neighbors is really not a side issue. I mean, ultimately, is there really anything that the neighbors can do to 
bring you success in Iraq if you Iraqis don't get your house in order and make it happen. If you're united, if you are, if you have a vision, and if you're executing that vision for peace, uh, reconciliation, stability, security, is there really anything the outside world can do to disturb that? Isn't it really up to you more than the neighbors? Um, I fully agree with the, your uh, statement and analysis. I think at the end of the day, um, who is going to decide on the key Iraqi issues are the Iraqis. We are not betting on, on anybody else on the earth, in fact, including our um, neighbors, in fact, who um, uh, shoulder responsibilities and becoming a decision maker for our internal national issues. I agree with you. But the problem is whoever might be now involved in, 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 in making this sort of chaos, making things very difficult to the Iraqis themselves, in fact, to sit down around the table and sorting out their internal issues. This is the problem. I am just uh, uh, remind you about uh, the unique, uh, the historical coexistence which prevailed, in fact, in, in, in the long history of Iraq before 2003. Um, nobody talked about, about the Shia and the Sunni. Nobody talks about the Kurdish and, and, and the Arabs and the Turkmans. And uh, don't forget even the tribes, even the families, in fact, you could, uh, you could see the husband is Sunni and his wife is Shia, or the Kurdish and the Arabs, in fact. Um, along our, our history, in fact, we, we managed, in fact, to, to live together in a unique and historical uh, brotherhood uh, coexistence. This in itself reflects a fact which is unavoidable, in fact, that there is a chance for, the, for, for, for Iraq, in fact, to, to survive. A chance, in fact, to get away off of the current dilemma. Somebody might ask, in fact, and whoever might be concerned about the Iraqi dilemma timing, is there is a genuine chance for Iraq to survive after this sort of unique tragedy that uh, my country is, is facing timing? The answer, oh yes. And I'm, I'm, I'm just betting about uh, what I'm, I'm calling the unique coexistence between the uh, Iraqi uh, 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 different uh, uh, components, the Shia, the Sunni, and the Kurdish, and the Arabs, everywhere. Um, all what we need is to stop and deter this interference. And I'm sure that the next day, the Iraqis will, will be able, in fact, to sit down around the table and sort out, sort out their, 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 uh, their, their, uh, their uh, pending issues. And time passing, there is uh, an, an, a growing uh, impression and perception for the Iraqis that there is only one path in front of everybody, Shia, Sunni, Kurdish, and Arabs, whoever might be. The national common interest of the Iraqis, which could gather all Iraqis, Sunni, Shia, and Kurdish, and Arab Turkmans, in fact, to line behind the common interest of Iraq the unity of Iraq, the stability of Iraq, the sp prosperous of Iraq. All these noble targets, in fact, and objectives is now, now being seen as a common objective between Iraqis. So th there is an opportunity, in fact, in, in the front of Iraqis to sit down and sort out their problems. I'm not, uh, I'm not asking anybody, in fact, to come to Iraq and try to, to be a decision maker on behalf of my side. All what I need, in fact, to sit down calmly with my, with my colleagues, the Shia, with my colleagues, the Kurdish, with my colleagues the, and brothers, the Turkmen and others, in fact, to see what sort of, of, of outstanding issues that it's pending, it's Im impending, uh, uh, the, 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 the genuine reconciliation. And be sure that if this is going to be stopped, and this is, I consider, in fact, the, the crunch, the key issue, all what we need time being, in fact, to stop and deter whoever might be making use of this chaos in Iraq, in fact, or capitalize on my country and people tragedy to pursue his personal or national agenda. And at the end of the day, my country, my people paying the cost. If we stop that, believe it or not, tomorrow for Iraq will be a different future. Who is differentiating between the Iraqis on basis of sects and affiliation and roots are not the Iraqis. We are victims on that. We are not troublemakers. We didn't create that. 
So there is an opportunity, in fact, for Iraq, in fact, for a better future, as long as we manage to stop this intervenors. So if this subject is beyond the capacity of United States, let us, the international community, shoulder the responsibilities. Let us, United Nations, the Security Council, issue a resolution which could deter on Chapter 7, deter everybody from interfering in my country internal issue. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Foreign Minister al khatib may I ask you, I sense some schizophrenia in the Arab Foreign Ministries about the Iran-American relationship. On the one hand, I hear you want the Americans to talk to Iran to diffuse the tensions and calm things down, but then I also hear that you're afraid, as the Deputy Prime Minister mentioned, that there'll be a carving up of uh, Iraq into Iranian and American spheres of influence. Uh, what, what is it? What do you want from uh, the Iranian-American uh, relationship? Uh, well, uh, what we want in general, uh, beyond what we want uh, from the American and the Iranian contacts, is to stabilize Iraq. If the efforts to stabilize Iraq succeed, we, the whole region will be able to regain Iraq. Iraq is an essential and very important country in the region. Its unity and territorial integrity uh, is uh, uh, strategically important to all of us, and we want that to happen as soon as possible. But I agree with Senator Smith that this is not only a security issue. This is a political issue and it depends. I don't disagree with what the uh, Vice President said, but I think that uh, the willingness and the uh, uh, ability of regional countries to support uh, Iraq and its government depends to a great extent on the success of the Iraqi government in, uh, 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 in uh, the things that has, have been committed by the Iraqi government itself. Uh, national reconciliation, a real political process for national reconciliation, uh, review of the constitution, review of the uh, oil law. Uh, uh, but most importantly, we in the region want to see all Iraqi components or components of the Iraqi society be dealt with on national grounds. We don't want to see uh, any uh, major component uh, uh, be treated as a minority. This is very, very important for the whole region. And we want to see, I think it's the interest of all countries in the region, to see a revival, a re revival of Iraqi nationalism. These are all important elements in order for a political process to succeed. Uh, uh, we want to encourage the contribution of all in the region and beyond to the uh, uh, efforts to s stabilize Iraq. But we don't want, as the Vice President and uh, uh, Barham said, we don't want any party to use Iraq as a fighting ground to achieve any tactical uh, gains. We want really to commit to honoring and to respecting the territorial integrity and to refrain from interfering in the internal affairs of Iraq. So there is uh, nothing schizophrenic about that. The top priority is to stabilize Iraq because we all have an interest in regaining Iraq. There is a great imbalance from the current situation in Iraq that is affecting all countries of the region, not to mention terrorism, but we are talking about long-term stability and balance in the region, which is severely affected by the continuation of the current situation in Iraq. Dr. Larajani, is Iran using the situation in Iraq to uh, pursue its uh, rivalry or its uh, contest with the United States government uh, on other issues, for example, uh, the nuclear file, uh, the Palestine issue. Uh, are you playing a game in Iraq that is really related to your relations with the United States rather than the issue of Iraq itself? Or to put this another way, in the talks that will begin on May 26th, uh, is Iran willing to discuss Iraq only with the United States or is this really tied in your mind or linked to American cooperation on issues that are of interest to you, like the nuclear file, like Palestine? Well, in fact, I should say uh, what uh, my brother Hashimi and Saleh said, I really agree with all of that, that is structure. I mean, it's not a matter of uh, interference. I think that issues are more than that. Let's go to your question exactly and I come back to that. Uh, on our meeting, uh, both of both Iran and the uh, United States have agreed to discuss only the issue of Iraq. It is in the presence of uh, the government of Iraq. We are not going to decide for the Iraqis. 
the role of Iran and the uh, United States is quite different. The United States is occupying force over there. We are a neighbor country, so uh, we will see what we can do to help Iraq. This is our prime objective. We want to have a neighboring country, stable, unified, its territorial integrity as well. So we are going to contribute on that. And let me tell you on the record that since uh, the start of the new government in Iraq, Iran's support for this government was unequal to any support in the region. I would like to just mention a point. My brother, Foreign Minister of Jordan, mentioned that uh, he, he was criticizing that some people are left uh, in the constitution of Iraq or so. Perhaps the constitution of Iraq is a result of their own production. Perhaps in the future they should uh, amend that. But we should not forget that this wariness about coverage of all minorities is stemming from a democratic sense, which we totally agree. But in the same Iraq, Saddam Hussein was ruling for 20 years, a single family for all the country. There was not room neither for Sunni, for Shia, for the Kurds. And my brothers in Jordan were supporting them all the way. They never asked that why Saddam Hussein is not letting others to come in. So you see, I would like to say that this kind of criticism may not be very substantial. The issue is that we should not flare up the rivalry between Shia and Sunni and this thing. As my brother Tariq Hashimi said, in Iraq people were living together in peace. Iran is not interfering in the Iraqi affair. We are going to discuss that. We are discussing that with the government daily. What, how we can help you? If they say, finish, we don't want any help from you, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, we are there to help our brothers in Iraq, period. We are not near the occupy. I mean, you, you, you mentioned about, uh, Senator has mentioned about the armament uh, sent from Iran to Iraq. I mean, they don't need armament from Iran. I mean, Iraq is full of arms. Borders are open. It could come from everywhere. But don't forget that. Those who are killed, who they are, they are mostly from the Shia. Sunnis are killed as well. But why Iran should incite, even suppose Iran doesn't have any regard for any humanitarian rule, suppose that. Why we should kill the Shia, at least we are Shia. It is basic wrong. For us, a Shia, a Sunni, a court to be killed is wrong. Even Al-Qaeda member to be killed as far as they are not fighting is wrong. I mean, we should put that again, I mean, away from our mindset. Senator has mentioned about uh, uh, the issue of respect, which is the, the kind of prelude to the success of the uh, meeting uh, in Iraq. Well, I mean, I mean respect is a uh, two-way story. I mean, we have been labeled the axis of evil. And uh, we are threat threatened every other day that this government should be changed. Congress is approving some budget to bring regime change in Iran. President Bush is saying that we are going to bomb Iran. And even just recently, after some good gesture, rather good gesture from Condoleezza Rice, uh, Mr. Dick Cheney came on the warship in the Persian Gulf and started threatening us. Here we are, the military might, and he said, well, the level of this meeting should be at ambassadorial level, no more, no. I mean, are they good signs for respect? Definitely not. I mean, uh, respect should be to, uh, the, from day number one after revolution to now, it is 30, 30 years past, every day we are witnessing a barrage of accusation from Washington coming toward Iran. I mean, respect for international law. Where we, where we evaded international law. Compare us with Israel. We are a signatory to MPT. Their cameras are over there. And they're monitoring us personally and uh, mechanically every day. And what about Israel? Israel neither endorsed MPT, doesn't let uh, Atomic uh, Energy Agency to, over, to come over there. So uh, what is respect? United States showed in his action doesn't have any respect itself for abiding by international law. Either we accept one concept. There is a super state called Israel, which is immune from any mistake. It is a God-given state. 
Everything they should do is right, and the rest should abide by the law. I mean, this double standard is very wrong. Uh, the Foreign Minister of Jordan had uh, a yes. question, but may, may I just ask if Senator Hatch or Senator Smith would like to respond uh, immediately to what uh, Dr. Larajani said? Briefly, though. I would like to respond. Uh, we have a great deal of respect for Iran. There's no question that you're a unique nation with great abilities. On the other hand, uh, uh, we don't think you're adding uh, one jot or tittle to helping to stabilize peace in the Middle East. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, it's easy to cause destabilization. It's very difficult to try and work for stabilization. Now, our country needs to, uh, to do a better job, it seems to me, of dealing with our friends in Iran. Uh, I would like to see that personally. There's no excuse for us not sitting down and discussing these matters. On the other hand, it makes it very difficult when we know that Iran is helping to send weapons into Iraq that are killing not just Americans, but Iraqis themselves and teaching uh, people how to do the EFPs and the IEDs. Now these are things that bother us greatly. Uh, like I say, uh, why any top political scientist would even suggest that the president has indicated that he might bomb Iran or that we're going to invade Iran, knowing that he has said exactly the opposite and so has Vice President Cheney, uh, is beyond me. But to make a long story short, we have respect for Iran. I'd like that respect to be justified. I would like us to sit down and see if we can resolve some of these difficulties. If we could resolve these difficulties, we then could probably all turn our attention to the Israeli-Palestinian set of problems and maybe for a change and bring about some resolution there and some reconciliation. But it's very difficult to do that when we find our young American boys and girls being killed in Iraq with weapons that have been sent from Iran and, uh, and uh, weapons of destabilization rather than working together to try and resolve some form of stability here in the Middle East, and especially with this new nation called Iraq. Thank you, Senator. It's hard, it's hard to take these comments seriously when we have the Iranian weapons that are creating chaos in Iraq. We have captured Iranian advisors and have them in custody and their plans and their checklists and their intentions. Uh, it's hard to take seriously that Iran wishes Iraq well or the American effort to establish democracy well. Foreign Minister? Yeah, I just want to say that all components and segments of the Iraqi people and society uh, paid and suffered as a result of the atrocities of the former regime. Nobody was excluded. And uh, I think that it's ironic uh, that when we support the uh, effort of Iraqis to, for instance, to honor the commitment that was agreed upon by Iraqis to review the, constitutions, the constitution, we hear comments from non-Iraqis that this may be an interference in the internal affairs of Iraq. What is important is uh, uh, to see uh, uh, deeds on the ground match statements and, and uh, uh, the well wishes you know, uh, uh, expressed by every party to the Iraqis. We want to see on the ground uh, 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 you know, respect to the territorial integrity and to the sovereignty of Iraq and uh, refrain from interfering in any possible way. When the national uh, uh, feeling or when nationalism weakens in a country, other affiliations, other identities, uh, you know, emerge. And uh, it may be uh, attractive for certain parties to support this segment or the other segment, but that comes at the expense of the national interest of Iraq. And as I said at the beginning, this come at, comes at the expense of our collective strategic interest in the region. Uh, I think that one of the flaws of the regional order in this region is that countries, certain countries, try to interfere one way or the other to influence the internal situation 
uh, or situations in other countries. And I think that we need to look at Europe, for instance, and learn that the European uh, evolutionary uh, uh, integration that took place over 50 years was based on uh, strong determination, strong political will by all European parties not to interfere in the internal affairs of each other. This is very important for Iraq, but it's important for all of us in the region. Thank you, Foreign Minister. We've run out of time, but I would, I would like to thank all of you. This has been a fascinating and, I think, very useful discussion about all these complex issues. Um, I want to apologize to the audience. I was hoping we'd get a question or two from the floor, but uh, it, it, over, it ran over. But thank you, and I'd like to applaud the, the, the panelists. Thank you. Good to see you, and I'll, I'll tell my daughter that uh, you graduated from her school. I'm a cougar. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, my uh, son likes the uh, University of Miami Hurricanes. Yes, oh, I know. <laughs> There's a big party. Yes, yeah.